It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. Hey, good morning to you. If you're just joining us, it's the Fish Florida Show. I am your host, Riscola. We are here every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. You can find us several ways you can listen to us. Um, probably the easiest way to listen to us is download the app. We have an app, and it's absolutely free. It's not just a free download. It's free to use. And uh, you can listen to us on the app. A very, very powerful uh, tool that you can have in the palm of your hand gives you a wide variety of information. Uh, this morning, I have Pam Worsh. She's one of the top female kayak anglers with me. She's always so generous to uh, to share her time and her knowledge with us. Uh, and um, let's, let me see if I can bring her on here. Good morning, Miss Pam. Good morning, Miss Cullen. Happy Father's Day to you, sir. Oh, well, thank you so much, and a happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Um, well, I'm thinking about it, because before I know it, the show will be over, and I'll forget. Uh, so, a happy Father's Day to all of you out there that are uh, that are dads, and uh, I'm going to be celebrating something today. I think, my, um, I think my kids have something up their sleeve for me, so there's no telling what's going to happen there. Uh, anyway, looking, looking at the, um, the radar for the Florida area, we have some... You know, some rough weather going on. Um, it is. It seems to be moving in a northwesterly uh, pattern. Uh, some of it is on the east coast. Some of it is on the west coast. Looks almost like a a band when you, when we have one of these hurricanes come through. Uh, unfortunately for us here in uh, South South Florida on the east coast, looks like we're going to get we're going to get some weather here shortly. Probably and maybe before maybe before the the show is over, I'm going to get stormed out. Uh, the weather on your side of the state uh, looks like it's kind of heading offshore, a little bit look, headed towards shore, but most of it offshore. What does it look like? It's beautiful right now. We should have <clears throat> excuse me, clear skies until this afternoon. It's almost like a summer pattern where it rains every afternoon. Yeah, it gets hot. I got caught in a shower. Yeah, I got caught in a shower over on your coast on Friday when I was out on the water. Oh, my. That wasn't bad. It cooled it us off. It was really kind of nice. <laughs> so now you will be back on this coast next week, right? Because we're going to have uh, the kayak tournament. That's right. I have a crazy schedule. I've got um, a captain's meeting on Wednesday for Lori Denton, who you had on last week. Yes, I want to get her back on. I, I feel bad. that We, we just kind of crossed wires and things just got messed up. So I'm I'm asking her to come back on. We'll see if I can get her back on, get a better, give her a, a more time. She's got a women's tournament uh, next weekend, so my captain's meeting is Wednesday night. Then I'm in uh, Pomp- Pompano on Thursday because they have the captain's meeting for the kayak on uh, Thursday. Saturday is the kayak tournament, and then Saturday after I get off the water, I drive back to Tampa because Lori's ladies' tournament is Sunday. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's and, a... and Monday I'll die. <laughs> wow. That's, that's a lot of traveling. That's a lot of stuff happening in a short period of time. That, you know, that's that's good for burnout. <laughs> <laughs> you know, God bless you that you can do that. Really, I'm I'm happy for you that you're able to do that. Get around and and, and be able to be part of all of these different things going on around uh, around our area. I'm very blessed. I have an understanding boss, and she's pretty cool about that because, uh, again, as you know, I uh, I had a career as a mortgage banker and left that after 35 years. So now I just, um, I'm having a good time working at Tampa Fishing Outfitters. What a big difference, huh? And, <laughs> yeah, no stress. I get to talk fishing all day. <laughs> oh, that's great. It really is. What a big difference. My goodness. Well, there aren't any major... Um, Warnings about the beaches today, other than uh, just be careful when the storms come in. You don't want to be around the water when the storms come in because there's always a likelihood of uh, these are, they're calling them thunderstorms. So thunderstorms, with the thunderstorms comes that wonderful, uh, <laughs> wonderful wake up call, the, uh, the electricity. So you don't want to be in the water for that. But other than that, it looks like we're going to have a pretty good early part of the day anyway. I don't think this stuff is going to catch up to us here 
I'm still looking at the radar, and I can't determine if it's going to catch us before the end of the show or it's going to right after the show. But some of it is already onshore. The bad stuff is offshore and working its way towards our area. So if you're going to do something, you better do it early in the day today to get it out of the way. Uh, otherwise, I think you're going to be looking at what I refer to liquid sunshine, which is it was welcome sometimes, you know. We get up, I, I walk the dog every morning. I, I got out there and did it this morning, a little earlier than normal because I have the show. But uh, we usually get out there about 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'd open that front door, and my goodness, you just feel the heat and the humidity. Uh, it wasn't quite so bad this morning, but uh, we are back into that pattern. We are def- Summer is definitely here for, so I hadn't been here for a while. <laughs> hadn't been here for a while, so... Um, Enjoy it while you can. We're gonna we're gonna get some liquid sunshine shortly. So um, last week, did you do any fishing? Uh, yeah, I did. Friday, I was in your area, uh, and I went offshore. Got was kind of practicing for the tournament. Uh, my gaffing skills are lacking. <laughs> uh, I, I end up even the big fish just grabbing them by the tail and slamming them into the kayak, which is not the way to do it, especially <laughs> if you end up with a big fish. Oh my gosh. One of the guys in South Florida got a 50-pound Maui Maui on um, Friday in Pompano, off the Pompano waters. Wow. I don't know how he did it, but he got that he got that dolphin into his kayak. My goodness. A 50-pound dolphin has got to be, that yeah. thing's got to be like four feet long. It, it's giant. It's giant. Four, maybe even <laughs> five feet long. Gosh. That's a huge fish. Yep. For a dolphin, that's for, a huge fish. For our kayakers, that's like a, and then in a kayak. record for the kayakers. And in a kayak, I just can't imagine that. <laughs> I don't know. From what I see, the kayaks, there's barely enough room for, for the person in the kayak. I don't know how in the world he got anything else in there. I, I Seriously, I have no idea how he That's crazy. I'm being there. Wow. I don't even know if I could get, if I'm strong enough to get that thing in the boat. How far out did you go offshore? Um, we were a few miles out. Oh, okay. Uh, there was the coolest thing was there was also a kingfish tournament with the boaters, mm-hmm. and uh, there wasn't much wind on Friday to begin with until the afternoon. But a long story short, they were <clears throat> flying kites with helium balloons, and because their baits dangle at the surface, mm-hmm. we were watching, and the kingfish rocketed sometimes over six feet out of the water wow. chasing their bait. Wow. It was, it was amazing. I, we probably for about 20 minutes, we just sat and watched some of these tournament guys. You know, I, have, I, no, I have not witnessed that. I've, I mean, I've seen them where they shred it, but they not where they come out of the water like that. Uh, you, they'll skim the top of the water. I've seen that. Uh, coming out of the water like that. I bet that was awesome. <laughs> Gee. That was. It was really, really cool. So, uh, you wow. know, it was, it's like watching the Discovery Channel. And I, I'm such a, I, I, how do I want to say this? It continues to fascinate me. I'm such a kid, like I stopped fishing and I just sat there and watched these guys for a while. It was <laughs> so interesting. Well, um, we're going to have Joe Hector on later. Joe is uh, the sponsor of the, now I'm not sure if, I'm, if I got it right. Is it, the, um, my mind just went blank. Uh, extreme extreme the owner, yeah he and his, yeah, he and yeah. his wife maria are the owners of extreme kayak tournament. that's that, that was the word i was looking for my mind just wouldn't wouldn't say um so he he's the one who puts it on so we'll have joe on here uh, a little later so he can give us specific information uh about what's happening um but from what i understand i think last year they had over a hundred right over a hundred people yeah. in kayaks yeah. going out that has to be an amazing sight. I, I hope that somebody has a, a drone shot of some of that stuff. I'd bet that's an amazing sight to see all those people. And and basically, they all hit the water at the same time. Is that right? Um, Pretty much. I mean, he used to do a shotgun start. Mm-hmm. But then people need bait. And um, Hillsboro Bait, Joe, we call him Joe Bait, he comes a little early and um, moors out. And we kind of like go out to them and grab our bait. Oh. And then we stay within the swimming area, the swimming um, buoys. Yeah. And when kickoff goes, we all launch from there. But basically, we're within 100 yards. All of us are within a 100 yard area. Wow. But all the boats are lined up first thing in the morning. We start when we see Joe come out, 
with the, the, the bait boat, that's mm-hmm. when people start getting in the water. Mm. But if, if you're up early next Saturday, you know, we start hitting the beaches around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Lord have just mercy. Just to get set up and have everything ready. At 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm still sawing logs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's that magic time now. I've got, uh, I believe I've got Robert from uh, Florida Fisherman Magazine. Is that you, Robert? Good morning. Go ahead, Pam. Happy Father's Day, Robert. Good to hear from you. Well, well thank you. Yeah, happy Dad's yeah, Day, my friend. Yeah, you, happy you Father's Day to all the, all the dads out there. And uh... so, so what have you been up to, young man, for the last week? <laughs> I've been fighting with Facebook for a week. But, uh, oh, Lord. Than that. Oh, Lordy, you don't want to get me. <laughs> I had a long story short, two years I fought with Facebook. I finally just had to open a new account. Yeah, this is sad so what's they, going uh, on. Last Saturday morning, we posted, uh, Darren and I were on there, and we posted some pictures, mostly of families and kids just asking for people to send in pictures for the magazine. Uh-huh. And apparently we posted too many pictures in a two-minute period or too many things in a two-minute period, and they shut us off for the week. So, they just don't I've like. Never heard of that. You know, they, they just don't like anything conservative. I'm not to be political, but that's the <laughs> truth. They just anything that has anything to do with supporting conservatism of any kind. And if you're supporting fishing, well, we were you know, There was no, uh, here just so we all understand. There are absolutely there are three rules on on the on our Facebook page: no politics, no religion, and no nudity. That's it. Mm-hmm. We got three rules and three rules only. And uh, everyone is aware that there was nothing political. It was just asking for people to send in stuff. But apparently, they, they I think their entire page is controlled by algorithms anyway. But apparently, it was an automated shutoff. And it was an automated message that came and said that you have posted too many things in the last, you know, whatever the time period was, mm-hmm. too quickly. And it, what it is is it thinks you're a robot. Oh, but, okay. But, the, but they have to understand that we have 16 editors. So wow. in theory, it would be possible to post 16 things in five seconds. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so hmm. we fought with them all week, and finally uh, they understood what we were doing and, and, and put it back on. But uh, they're becoming a... what I did all week was fought with them and figured out ways around their system. So I started posting live videos, and st- that was the only thing that would work was live videos and events. Wow. So we started the Facebook shut us off event. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're becoming a you major a major contributor of uh, preparation H, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yep. Yep. I like Instagram. There's no drama on Instagram. It's short. <laughs> it's sweet. You know. The problem with Instagram is you can't post anything that has a link to it or a uh, website exactly. attached to it. Exactly, or it, so. any yeah, any video that's more than um, I think sixty seconds, hmm. unless it's up on YouTube. Yep. But anyway, we got past that, and uh, other than that, it's uh, Robert. Day, so, do you plan on going down to Pompano for this extreme kayak next weekend? Yeah. Next you, weekend is my birthday weekend. I will not be. Oh, there. happy birthday, oh, Robert! Happy birthday. Yeah, I get Father's Day and my birthday all at once. It's a, this is a good week for me. Hot dog. <laughs> so will you will you be with us next Sunday or will you be celebrating? Uh, I'll I'll be on for a few minutes. Good, because I'm where I'm always. Ask, so. If we can ask, where are you headed? Uh, just down to the Keys. Oh no! Nice. I normally always I, I go down there and go fishing for my birthday every year. So great. I will be doing that again this year. So that's great. Wow. Well, I know you have, uh, who is it, uh, Dave, uh, Captain Dave S- Sively? S- is it? Sively, yeah. Sively. He's in Key West. And then against the Grain Charters is in Key Largo, which, by the way, congratulations to Charlie uh, Housh and, or Charlie Rogers and Melanie Housh. They got engaged uh, last weekend. Oh, congratulations. They are the co-captains at Against the Grain Charters. So. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to we're gonna hear from... Um, Angelia. Angelia was kind of my regular for the Keys. Uh, she got a, a super job, That's super good. Up in Alaska. She's going to call in this morning. We're going to get an update from her. Oh, my gosh, I envy her. She has come. Some of the pictures that she has put up, I put a few of them up oh, on on the Facebook page. How awesome. The time difference. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what the time difference is, but she said it was going to work out, and I said, great. Uh, so we'll hear from her in a little while. Hours, I would think, so. She she posted some videos of the of the um, uh, killer sharks. I think were they killer sharks or whales? One of the two. I don't remember. Killer don't whales. Uh, killer whales or or shark. Um, killer whales or whales. I don't recall which one of the two it was. I think it was killer whales. Um, I mean, like right up close kind of thing. I that I can't imagine that. Those things are huge. Yeah, yeah they are huge. And uh, there's videos out there of them swimming through marinas. So, you know. Oh, yes. I, now that you mention that, I, I, do you know where that was? No, I don't. But I, I saw the video. That was amazing. Yeah. This monster <laughs> thing, it's m- bigger than most of the <laughs> boats that were there where it was swimming around. Yeah. That's crazy. Anyway, the fishing's been good. Um, there are dolphin everywhere. Uh, they finally made their return. I guess the water stabilized enough in temperature, and they're everywhere from Palm Beach to the Keys. So, good time for that. And uh, if you've got the time and you're not doing something today on Father's Day, get out there. So. Um, Did you? Were you on when I told you about the big dolphin that one of the kayakers landed? No, I missed it. Oh. I, I'll see if they can if they'll post it onto your magazine. It's in Southwest Kayak Anglers or South Florida Kayak Anglers. Okay. Uh, their Facebook page. It was it was a monster. Fifty pounds, yeah, Robert. Yeah, there was been there was a, a couple of tournaments down in the Keys last weekend, and and there's another one. There's a Father's Day tournament going on this weekend uh, down there, but in uh, Isla Mirada. But. Um, yeah, there were some big ones, a lot of 30 and 40 and a couple of 50s in there. So Yeah. yeah and, um, Pam was, was t- telling us it was a 50-pounder. I, I, yeah. I, was, I was thinking that there's got to be at least four feet long, right? That 50 pounds? Yep. Oh, yep. E- easily five feet long, probably. Yeah. Wow. It's <laughs> the size of the kayak. <laughs> and then he puts, yeah. somehow he gets it into the kayak with him. That's amazing. I don't yeah, know. Getting it I into the no kayak idea. would be the most amazing part of that. So. <laughs> I know because usually the the first thing, if you're on a boat, the first thing you do when you're landing dolphin, especially big bull dolphin, is you open the cooler, and it goes. It doesn't land on the floor it, or the deck. It goes straight into the cooler, and you slam down the cooler lid because <laughs> they go. <"Purr!" laughs> so I, yep. I have no idea how he did it. I mean, I've landed smaller ones and like held on to him for life, you know, but I have no idea how he did that. I wish they had some video. All I've seen is still pictures. Uh, Pam, do you know him? Do you, I beg your pardon? Do you know the angler that caught the fish? Yeah, I'll, I'll see if we can't get him on. Yeah. He'll, be in the, uh, he'll be in the tournament next weekend, so okay. uh, maybe Sunday after the tournament we can uh, get him on, see what's going on. Yeah. What time's the yeah, turn? What time's the uh, the tournament over? Uh, three o'clock on Saturday. Okay. Yeah. And then that's when you have to be back on the beach, and mm-hmm. then you have the way on way in. So like around four o'clock, everything starts to wrap up. Cool. So yeah, so if he's available on you know next Sunday, I'd love to hear how he did that. That to me that that really is a it's got to be a very intriguing thing to have a. Now if I'm right, and and Robert was kind of I was guessing a little earlier four and a half five feet how long is a kayak <laughs> it's got to be half the length of the kayak right what are those under 11 feet well my my offshore kayak is 13 and a half i don't know if he was in a hobie or what kayak he used so those those are questions we'll have to ask him yeah it's got to be a, a very interesting story this thing is <laughs> in my mind, I can see this thing almost half the length of the kayak. Where he's putting it? I want to. I want to know where he put it. I didn't think he had that much room on there. I, I always think just gaffing a a uh, a dolphin that size from a kayak would be a challenge. So yeah, yeah. You, you would find well, me upside down. Tur- yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a tournament, and the guys were pre-fishing for the tournament uh, this Saturday, so. Anytime, hopefully, we pre-fish offshore, you're going with somebody else. So I know there was at least two other guys with him. So I don't know what kind of help if they got together and helped get that thing on his yak or not. Unfortunately, in a tournament, you get no help at all. Yeah. You can't land it. If you can't it land count. it. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. 
Well, amazingly, we're back up against that magic time now. We're going to have to take a break. But before we go, Robert, um, I want people to know how, how do they reach it. For, first of all, Robert is with the Florida Fisherman Magazine. I don't know if I said that earlier. I've been going through so many notes and stuff here. And uh, Florida Fisherman Magazine is a digital magazine that can be found online. And Robert, what, um, where can they find the magazine and what's the latest about the magazine? Uh, they can find it at www.flfishmag.com. We will be starting work on the next issue soon. So if you've got some pictures, an article, something you think is of interest, please send that to pages at flfishmag.com and we'll try to get it in the magazine. And I hope everybody has a great Father's Day. Thank you, Robert. I greatly appreciate it. You do a phenomenal job, by the way, on putting that magazine together. I mean, as somebody who used to work with, years ago, used to work with web pages and stuff like that, I know how much work is involved. You're taking pictures and uh, pasting them and putting them in different places and, and having to put the text around them. That's a lot of work. So you do a phenomenal job. The pictures are, are great. The pictures are well done, you know, high, D, high HD pictures. Um, and uh, the way the whole thing is put together is just uh, very professional. And uh, thank you. The thing I love about uh, digital magazines is you can include, we normally have about 30 videos included in that magazine. Wow. People's pages. And uh, so you get uh, get a little bit of everything in the magazine. So I hope everybody checks it out. And uh, like I said, everybody have a great Father's Day and get out there on the water when you get a chance. Thank you, my friend. God bless. You too. Miss Pam, any parting words for Robert? No, just everybody check out the magazine. It's really written extremely well. It covers a lot of different topics. It's free. Um, it, it, great photographs. I, I can't see why anybody doesn't check that out. It, it takes me two or three days to read it all. Yeah, take advantage of it. All right, it's that magic moment. is an adventure full of special moments. A cruise! Surprise! Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. (laughs) But every moment you spend with your kids, (laughs) even the smallest moments, can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I wasn't sure if I could do it. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but the teachers, the counselors, they help you. One of the teachers was uh, Miss Araceli. Miss Araceli, she gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing and she'll come over and she'll sit there with you until you get it. Thank you, Ms. Araceli. I know you make a difference in people's lives because of the person and teacher you are. I wanted to be here because I wanted to thank you for helping me get a beautiful gift. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Getting your high school diploma, it is a life-changing experience. It really is. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Have you ever heard of Audible? Audible is a website with hundreds of thousands of audiobooks. They're all high quality, easy to listen to, and best of all, if you take advantage of a special deal that we've worked out for you, you can get one for free. That's right, a free audiobook of your choice in any genre, simply by going to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and signing up for the free trial. It's simple to do and it would support the shows that we bring to you. And hey, you get a free book out of the whole thing. So why not take advantage of it today? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash open eyes and sign up for the trial. Ask 10 different scientists about the environment, population control, genetics, and you'll get 10 different answers. But there's one thing every scientist on the planet agrees on. Whether it happens in a hundred years, or a thousand years, or a million years, eventually our sun will grow cold and go out. When that happens, it won't just take us. It'll take Marilyn Monroe, and Lao Tzu, and Einstein, and Moroputo, and 
Buddy Holly and Aristophanes. All of this, all of this was for nothing. Unless we go to the stars. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today while other stations just talk a good game we win it hey sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun all i grab a fishing pole and cast it in the water and fish until dawn oh my i caught a shot i'm fishing in florida when the sun shines all day It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. All right. Well, a good morning to you. If you're just joining us, it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is the Fish Florida Show. And a happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Uh, get out there and enjoy it while you can. On the East Coast, I think we're going to have some... Liquid sunshine here in a little while. I don't know uh, a whole lot about the West Coast. It looks like what's going on in the West Coast is moving offshore. Uh, and that whatever is going to hit is going to be very minimal. But on uh, our side on the East Coast, we're looking uh, we're looking to see some liquid sunshine today. So get out there and enjoy it while you can. Uh, this morning I have Pam Worth. She's one of the top female, female kayak anglers here in Florida with me. And I'm always so appreciative of having her sharing her time and her knowledge and some of the experiences that she's had. I thank you, Miss Pam. My pleasure. It's it's great to be here. Thank you so much. And um, happy Father's Day. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Again, to all of you dads out there, a happy Father's Day to you. Uh, all of you guys that, uh, that you know, work and uh, work, especially those that spend time with your kids. Uh, this is a special day, going to be a special day for me because I know I, uh, I t- typically every Sunday I have my kids come over and, I'm, and we cook here at the house. Um, we'll cook we'll barbecue or we'll cook something just so that we're, the kids, one time a week, we all try to get together as a family. And when I told them I had, uh, you know, come on over Sunday, we'll have the barbecue. And they said, no, 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 we're going to do something different. <laughs> so uh, I expect to get a little surprise today from them. Nice. That's great. Hey, listen, I need to do a correction. Um, I was looking inches. That dolphin was 48 inches and it was just under 35 pounds. So four, my bad on that. All right. Well, that's still four feet, right? Yep. And if you're in a 13-foot uh, kayak, that's a third of the length of the of the kayak. My goodness. That's, I I'm, I want to find out where he put that thing. <laughs> How much? Well, re- the guy's name mm-hmm. on Facebook, if you, his name is, um, gosh, I can't pronounce his first name. It's like Weiss Janus, W-I-E-S-Z is his first name. Last name is J-A-N-C-S-I. And I just I am them. Okay. So we'll see if we can't can get them. Yeah. So it, when we're talking about while we're talking about the kayaks, how much storage do you really have on a kayak? It, you know, that's like how much storage is in your car. It kind of depends on what model you have mm-hmm. and what you're trying to do with it. Um, mine has. Um, I, I put my if I have a live well, then I put my fish bag on the nose of my boat and zip tie it down where the opening is towards me where I can reach it. It's kind of in a long triangle if you kind of want to say what it looks like. So it, it's perfectly matched for the bow of my boat. Um, some of the guys put it right behind their seat. Hobie makes, um, mine's a native one, but Hobie makes one that's a little stiffer. So instead of laying it flat, you can lay it sideways. And these are, if you look at the big kingfish tournaments, uh, they all use when they bring their fish 
uh, to weigh in, it, it, they carry it in a fish bag. Well, that's very similar to what the kayakers use. Some of the guys use coolers, but coolers, to me, take up too much space. With the fish bag, you can throw 10 pounds of ice in there, and away you go. Wow. Um, that was yeah. one of the next questions I was going to ask. Is I see people or I hear people of having coolers. Where do you, if you're going to have a cooler, I, I take it they put it on the somewhere on the kayak, strap it down or something. Yeah, I take for drinks. I always, uh, I know you hate this, but I always freeze two bottles of water, mm -hmm. and then I have two bottles of cold water, and um, I have a little cooler that I put that in. And the frozen water is usually three quarters defrosted when I come off. Yeah. So I have I have four bottles of water there for me and an apple. Um, but yeah, every, everybody does a different thing. Some of the kayaks they actually have storage like in the hall, mm -hmm. and they can store it. I know a couple of the Hobies do, and I know one of my buddies would store his fish there. I don't know how he ever cleaned that inside <laughs> out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody's every yak is a little different, and each manufacturer makes two or three different styles of kayaks. Wow. So um, that's why I said, if I know it's early in the morning, but people also are coming in in the afternoon. But if you really want to see creative ways um, that people have set up their offshore kayak, get down there and look at them because everybody will talk to you until right before launch and right as it gets close to that magic hour, you know, your stomach gets a little butterfly, then, you know, you get a little anxious. So that's probably not the best time to ask somebody a question right before they're ready to launch. <laughs> but as they're setting up, as they're setting up, if you don't mind them continuing to set up, they'll yeah. answer any of your questions. We're pretty social. I can see that now. Can I ask you a question? No, get away. <laughs> I always, I turn around and I smile and I say, I would be happy to answer any of your questions. Unfortunately, I love that word, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'm just ready to launch. Bug off. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you don't think I'm rude. <laughs> Bug off. Bust out of here, man. Leave me alone. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I, um. I, I'm going to do my best to get down there. Typically, around what time do you actually go? Does it start? I know you said four or five in the morning, but they're not. They're setting up at four or five in the morning, right? Right. We can ask Joe when Joe comes yeah, okay. on. Yeah, because... I don't know. Usually, he tells us at the captain's meeting, which is this Thursday at Brews mm -hmm. on um, Federal Highway in Pompano. But um, we can ask him when he yeah, comes let's, on. Let's see if, if maybe he knows. If anywhere yeah. between. Yeah, it's anywhere between 6 and 7 o'clock. It depends on the weather, and it depends on what time of year it is when there's – because heat – safety is the most important, and you want to make sure it's safe light out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, uh, his record is absolute safety for everybody. And I, I, Weren't you the one that told me they actually rescued somebody who wasn't even in a tournament one time, right? Was that them? That's true. That's true. You're right. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of anglers, uh, I mean, stopped what they were doing – Stayed with this guy. The photographer in the help boat got in, and yeah, they towed this guy to safety. I mean, he so, took uh, he it, took the right day to go offshore fishing. You're lucky, very fortunate man. Very fortunate uh, because it could have turned out to be completely different. Yeah, I mean, he didn't realize that he had a crack in the boat. I think it was, and the boat was taking on water. He didn't have a marine radio with him. So there was no way for him to signal for help or anything. It's just a couple of the guys came across him. You know, you know, and, and you have the alert. You have stressed and I have stressed. If you're going to go out there, particularly there's somebody in a kayak, you've got to have some kind of redundancy with regard to the ability to communicate with people. Um, to go out there with nothing like that, that's you really... You, you're not doing yourself a service. You, if you're going to be out there, and particularly with somebody like this, it sounded like um, he wasn't all that experienced to begin with, right? He was, he wasn't Correct. like, yeah. So you should, you, and it's, he should have something like an Atlas Tracks and a cell phone. Um, exactly. Atlas Tracks would be ideal, ideal. Yeah. Uh, Although I don't know how they could issue an alert if you actually flip. Um, but, uh, it, yeah, it, it, I I guess he'd he'd have to have somebody monitoring him, and and there would have to be some way for them to realize that. But the the bottom line is he could be found instantly. God forbid. Um, it's really crazy if you've never been out on the ocean in a boat, and I, I would imagine everybody here in South Florida sometime has been. But when you've ever been out there, uh, particularly like when we're fishing and we're looking for, 
or looking for seaweed or something like that, you'd be amazed at how quickly you, you spot a clump of something, big clump, far bigger than a human being would be, and then in seconds it disappears from the waves going up and down. All of a sudden, now, you, now you're looking like crazy trying to find it again. Well, it was right there a second ago. Where did it go? And when you imagine uh, uh, somebody who's a, a fraction of a size of some of these little islands of, of weed that are out there, uh, how much more difficult it would be to be found. You've, you've got to um, have the ability to communicate, and, and God forbid something happens to be found. Um, that's, right. That's just common I, I sense. Think, yeah, I agree with you. I'm, um, I mean, there's a lot of guys who go out, and they're super, super capable, and go out on their own, um, and God bless them. Uh, I can't. I, I want that security of having somebody with me, you know, just in case something should happen or if I needed help landing something, you know, a fish or your, your rudder breaks, your, your propel system breaks, uh, you take on water. I mean, all these yeah. things you don't, you know, you don't foresee. And I'm not a guide, especially offshore. I've had people, oh, can we go out with you, blah, blah, blah. I, I always recommend if you're going to do something new for the first time, go with a guide. Find mm. somebody who, you know, is, is that's what he does. He yeah. teaches people how, he or she teaches people how to do that. I, you know, how wide is, I'm curious, how wide is your, your kayak? Two feet? Uh, it's um, right around 27 inches wide. Yeah, so it's just, I'm just a little over two feet. I'm thinking of my measuring feet. board. Yeah. My measuring board is like 30 inches, and it fits perfectly from side to side. So I'm thinking right around 29 to 30 inches wide. Yeah. Now, you can get kayaks that are wider and kayaks that are skinnier. I can't imagine. But at, at, a, at about a little over two feet wide, if you're not careful about the balancing of what you're doing, you could very easily flip over. Is that right? Some are more flippy than others. Mine is an extremely stable kayak. Oh. I'm a big person. For for a woman, I am really tall. I'm five ten, and I'm I'm not twiggy by any stretch of the imagination. So I can stand in it. I can fish off of it. Um, I've never accidentally fallen out out of it. I have um, gone over a couple of times. One I had a leak, and one a a rogue wave caught me, mm -hmm. but uh, both times I was with somebody and yeah, that's the you thing. Know, yeah, got to got to yeah. be a buddy. You got to be a, somebody uh, have have a buddy with you uh, when you're doing something like that. That's uh, and a lot of these boats, uh, how small do they get? I know they get to like 14 or 15 feet. How small do they get? Oh man, I've seen. Um, oh my goodness, you know you you can get them. Hmm, I've offshore i wouldn't go in anything smaller than about 12 feet mm -hmm. you just you want something stable but inshore i've seen i mean you can turn around and go to a, a box store and go pick up one of their kayaks if you're going to do something in the canals or the flats or especially lakes uh, bass fishing is one of the biggest uh growing kayak industries oh. uh they, they have big tournaments. I know Hobie has a tournament. NATO is sponsoring a tournament this fall, and it's a ten thousand dollar first, you know, first prize award money. Wow! So that yeah, Lake Gunstersville or something like that. Well, I was planning on having uh, Elijah Fitzgerald on during this slot, and she didn't call in, so she may be having issues, or she may be out of out of the area. <clears throat> but she was. I wanted to hear from her in the update that she had. Uh, she's the only tournament that I know of that has a category for trash. You, you can pick up trash, and then it gives you an opportunity to literally win cash for picking up trash. That's the kind of stuff I love because everybody wins. So I'm sorry that uh, I'm sorry that she wasn't able to call in. I'll see if I can get her next week. Come on next week and give us an update. And the tournament doesn't last just a couple of days. It lasts, I think, several months, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it started the end of May, and it runs through, um, what is that, uh, Labor Day in um, September. So hmm. it's the whole summer. It's, yeah. it's a great program, great for kids, great for families. You can win a truck, you can win a boat, you can win, uh, you know. I, I love it, really, honestly, I love it because you can tell that the people behind it are out to benefit everybody. 
when you have a category that says, all you got to do, there's some spec- specifications you got to do ahead of time, but it's basically, all you got to do is get a five-gallon drum, a five-gallon bucket, fill it up, take a picture of it, and they'll give you an opportunity to win cash to do that. Um, the, some, some of the services that she offers to the kids who need um, uh, service credits, you know, for community service. You get a five-gallon bucket, you fill it up, and she gives you, I don't know where, how she works it out, but she'll work it out with you. So everybody wins. The, the, the kid gets the credits that they need. We win as a society because we get our, our beaches and our, our oceans, you know, that much cleaner. That's the kind of stuff I love. Yeah, it, it's great. Plus, the money that it raises literally goes back into your fishing neighborhoods. Uh, they work on uh, replanting seagrass. Oh, yeah, they work yeah. on making oyster beds. Uh, right and now, stocking. they're spending thousands of dollars on restocking redfish yeah. and snook that were killed during the red the red tides. So they're That's a great, great. organization. Yeah. See, I, I can't help but want to support something like that. And believe it or not, we're up against uh, that magic moment again. So friends, don't go away. We will be right back. It's the Fish Florida Show. You're listening to the Fish Floor of the Show with your host, Briskella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. From the author of Silent Steps and Haunted, finding an explanation for the unknown, comes a story so chilling it will haunt you for years to come. Krista is a young woman escaping her past, running away from her family, her traumas, and her God, hoping to find a new life in a different town. But when she is forced to make a horrible choice, she comes to realize malevolent entities have controlled the true darkness she has been a part of. That is when her real terror begins. Penitence is disturbing and evocative. It will tear down the walls between what is real and what is nightmare. Penitence is the new novel by the man called The New Master of Speculative Fiction, Ira Robinson. Find it and all of his books at his website, originalworlds.com. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today. 561-793-9992. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, where your pet gets celebrity treatment. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. (laughs) What do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. 
Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> Uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. Dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. All right, my friends, it is the Fish Florida Show. Hello and welcome and a good morning to you. A happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Uh, we have uh, been on the air for just a little while. If you've missed anything this morning, you can always catch up with us on the archives. The archives are located at fishfloridashow.com and you just click on past events and you'll find all of our archives uh, I think we're up to last week now so we're pretty much up to date uh, you can find our archives there and you can review anything that you've missed this morning I have Pam Worth she's one of the top female kayak anglers uh, here in Florida uh, she's gracious enough to spend her time with me this morning I'm so grateful for that and uh, share with me uh, some of her experiences some of her skill sets and uh, just general opinions, all in all. So, good morning, Miss Pam. Thank you for joining. My pleasure, and happy Father's Day to you, Riscala, and all the other dads out there. I appreciate that. I'm I'm looking for uh, Joe to call in. Let me see if I can send him another message. See if we can get him to to uh, call in. I wanted to find out a little bit more about the uh, Extreme Kayak Fishing Tournament. That's going to be. I thought I heard somebody come up come aboard yeah i didn't uh yeah he they may have gotten disconnected i don't don't he's not showing up on up on the uh on the board up here um when is uh when is this going to be it's going to be next uh saturday yep it's next saturday the captain's meeting where they go over the rules and they have a big raffle which is a fundraiser i think for the children's home he's been doing it for 10 years now and has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for them um, that's Thursday evening at, uh, I think it's called the Brew House, B-R-U, on Federal Highway. So anybody can come. Uh, great prizes, great raffles, uh, and, and enjoy yourselves. And then the tournament is on Saturday. Cool. Off the north, south side, the south side of the Pompano Pier. Well, I, he, he should be joining us here in a minute when we get more specific information uh, from him when that, when that occurs. I'm hoping that uh, it's with the way things are today in our technology, somebody has a drone and gets a drone shot. Um, in my mind, I could just see that it would be really awesome to see well over 100 uh, of these kayaks hitting the, uh, hitting the water and going out there. He and has video out. He's actually gotten that. He oh, has really? video of the launch and people launching and uh, all the different colored kayaks on the blue water. It looks like uh, an Easter egg basket. It's so cool. Yeah. I, now, when you say he's got video, is it from the air? Like a yeah, helicopter somebody, shot or something? Oh, cool. Some, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. had somebody with a drone actually do that. I think it was a year ago or two years ago. So, uh, uh, yeah, that, yeah, it's pretty cool. I can't remember where he put it, but it might be on his Facebook page. We'll have to take a look. On at, Extreme Kayak Fishing. Yeah, Extreme Kayak Fishing. And the website that he has, uh, is that ExtremeKayakFishing.com? Right. Okay. All right, I think we've got him on. I think finally we have him on. Good morning, Joe. Hey, how's it going, guys? Happy Father's Day. First Father's Day for you. Oh, thank you so much. I, uh... Sorry for the late call in. I've been uh, uh, dealing with some uh, baby stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Brave ha- new world. A happy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Happy new oh, father's yeah. father's going, day. Guys? Good. We're doing. We're just kind of talking about the uh, the tournament. Um, one of the questions I had was what, and I know it's difficult. So just give me an idea. What time do you think the tournament is actually going to start? That you're going to get people out in the water. Yeah. So um, we usually shoot off at first light. So. I'm pretty sure that'll be, uh, the shoot-off will be around like 7.15-ish, um, and that's when we'll do the shoot-off. We usually give the exact time away um, at the kickoff party, yeah. but uh, but yeah, so it'll, it'll most likely be around 7.15 uh, right at first light. We give anglers a chance to uh, pay for parking, and uh, which will be at around 6, and then, uh, sorry, I'm out of breath, and then, um, <clears throat> and then they get their bait. Uh, right there on the water from uh, Joe's bait, uh, which is, um, uh, it, it'll literally be on the water itself, um, as long as it's nice and flat, which hopefully it will be. And then, uh, and then yeah, anglers uh, will, will be given um, instructions on the microphone from me, and I'll also have my radio on. So as I'm talking through the mic, I'm talking through the radio, and we'll do our radio checks and make sure everyone has their safety gear, and we shoot off. Now, how many times have you done this? This isn't your first rodeo, I know. Oh yeah, I've. Uh, this is our ninth year wow. of, uh, of doing the of doing the tournament, wow. and that's uh, including four a year. So, um, whew, that's a lot of tournaments. Yeah, you're kidding. <laughs> well, we were. Yeah, so and. We were, we were talking about how uh, you are so focused on the safety aspect of this and that uh, you make sure that that is the ultimate goal for everybody is that they go out there and enjoy themselves, but that they're safe. And I thought that was uh, very admirable. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, Pam said that she thought you had a, a drone shot of this that goes on. Will you have a drone shot of this uh, this this coming tournament? Yeah. yeah uh, of, the, well, uh, of a shoot-off. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll get plenty of drone shots, and uh, when the pier was operational, we were able to to get some awesome shots from the pier of the whole of the whole lineup of the kayaks and stuff. So um, either way, we'll we'll because I'm not sure if the pier's open yet, but uh, we'll have shots of of the shoot off and all these anglers uh, uh, going off at the same time. It's it's definitely well, don't a you have treat. don't you have a, a drone shot of maybe a couple summers ago? That you got? Oh, yeah. Um, oh, you're talking about past pictures. Right. Well, I, both. I was asking. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, I got plenty of uh, uh, pictures of all the anglers shooting off and all that. Yeah, <clears throat> I, have, I have lots of pictures of that. And if people want to get involved in this, Joe, uh, is it too late to get involved? Oh, no, no. Anglers can uh, sign up um, all the way up until the day of. Um, most of the anglers will sign up at the kickoff party, and that's going to be taking place on uh, Thursday night from 5 to 8 at Brews Room in Pompano Beach. And we'll also have our huge raffle to benefit the Broward Children's Center. And uh, I think this year we're actually getting uh, one or two of the kids to be there, which will be awesome. Uh, I always tell a lot of these anglers that, you know, when my wife and I go there, uh, we bring them magazines and, and show them photos. You know, they look at a lot of us anglers as, as heroes. Um, you know, just they even like the whole getup. You know, we're wearing our gloves and our and our you know our life vests, and you know we got all these cool like gas and weapons. And, <laughs> you know, they love they love yeah, it. Um, yeah. Yep. And, and it's 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 awesome for these kids. So um, every year, you know, it's hard to get them to come to a lot of this stuff. Uh, only because a lot of them, you know, they have, um, you know, the trakes and stuff like that. So they, they can't uh, be in, pu- you know, m- major public places. Yeah. But yeah. Um, sometimes we're able to get some of these kids over to the to the event. So uh, and then when that happens, that's that's huge for us. Mm. That's like icing on the cake. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Wow. So, uh, yeah. And so, I, think, I think this summer slam, um, you know, the fishing has obviously been, uh, as Pam knows, pretty good. Um, so we're hoping for uh, for some nice fish this year, and and uh, I think I think we'll get it. Um, you know, there's a lot of big kings out there. They're catching mahi mahi out there. Um, so yeah, there's there's some there's some good fish. There's even some uh, some nice big blackfin still 
still around. So they're scattered. They're not in those big schools anymore, but they're still there. So is is the tournament after a particular species? How does the how does somebody win the tournament? So okay, so we have a list of eligible fish, which will be on the website. Um, for the most part, it's blackfin tuna, uh, mahi mahi, wahoo, kingfish, cobia, um, African pompano, and um, so they'll go out for that list of fish and whoever wins the total weight of five eligible fish ends up winning the tournament. Obviously you can only keep two Kings out of the five, but um, so it's total weight of that. And then we also have a bunch of side divisions like the Kingfish Calcutta, uh, which is single heaviest Kingfish. We have a tuna division um, sponsored by tuna skin. So we, we also have a bunch of side pots where anglers can also win some awesome prizes. Great. And it's, it runs from typically approximately 7 in the morning until about 2 or 3 in the afternoon? Correct, yeah. Well, 2 o'clock, the anglers have to be on the beach uh, for weigh-in. So they, they um, you know, and then once we get everything tallied, we usually start weighing in the fish around noon. That's when a lot of the anglers start coming in, and we have a little area set up for that. We actually weigh the fish in front of the anglers before the main event. Um, just so we can tally down the weights beforehand to kind of make everything run smoother. And then we do kind of like a show-esque type weigh-in uh, on stage, and we play guess the weight for the kids, and, and they can win <laughs> prizes on stage and stuff like that. So um, everything's pretty much tallied by two, and uh, and then we just put on the show until around 3 o'clock, and, um, and everyone has a good time. Sounds like an awesome way to spend a Saturday. And uh, kids benefit, and those who get involved benefit. And, you know, this is the kind of thing that I enjoy, where people, generally speaking, everybody benefits. Everybody involved in this thing is going to benefit one way or another. And um, that's the kind of stuff that we need more of, where uh, everybody benefits, not just a you know, one-sided kind of deal, where we have people on both sides of, uh, of the fence, if you will, benefiting from what's going on. Um, and a website. Do, uh, do you have a website for this? You. Yeah, you can go to extremekayakfishing.com, and we got everything on there uh, with uh, past tournaments, future tournaments, uh, you know, upcoming events. And yeah, you can you can check out everything there. And um, and yeah, I agree with you. Our our plan, you know, when we first started extreme kayak fishing tournaments, you know, our plan was something that was going to be different quote unquote you know from the from other events mm -hmm. and we wanted we wanted to add uh, an element uh not just fishing but for where you know people can just come to the beach and enjoy multiple different things like you know a crossfit challenge or a paddleboard race um you know volleyball stuff like that so uh we even you know one year had a uh a sand sculpting contest you know cool. so you know, these are these are things where we, we want to get the community uh, involved, you know, uh, obviously on Pompano Beach. And uh, I think through the years, we've definitely done it. And, um, you know, we're just hoping to, to keep growing that part of it, um, not just the fishing, but the, the event-esque part of it. Um, that That's the goal, you know, for extreme kayak fishing is, is to grow the community that comes to these events. Well, that's awesome, my friend, and I appreciate people like you who do these kind of things. Uh, again, it's a, it's a it's a situation where everybody benefits, and those, that's a win win. You know, how, how can you not support something like that where everybody wins? That's just a, it's a great thing. It's a great experience. For, I'm sure it would be a phenomenal experience for those uh, kids who can't go out in a kayak to go just see this, go witness what's going on. H how many um, kayaks do you think you're going to have this year so far? Yeah, so this this one, this, SummerSlam one is usually our biggest one out of the year. So we'll we'll probably get over a hundred for this one. Wow. Um, usually we get like you know from a hundred and ten to one fifteen to one twenty for this one. Uh, one year we had a hundred and seventy. Um, so uh, it really kind of matters on the weather. The weather is a huge factor when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's but most of the time. Uh, even if the weather's shaky, we'll, we'll get over 100 for SummerSlam 1. Uh, SummerSlam Part 2, uh, you know, some guys, you know, they, they, I don't know if they lose, they kind of feel like they're going to drop out, they're not going to win. So we, we lose a couple guys for Part 2, uh, but it's still a big event where we'll get 80 to, you know, maybe a little bit over 100 as well. Wow. 
I, I, that's got to be one heck of a scene to watch these people heading out as as uh, when the tournament starts, as they head out to the beaches and then uh, break out into the water and and uh, start doing their thing out there. Um, all right, my friend. Well, I'm looking forward to having you back on with an update as to uh, what happened and uh, and uh, more information about. Uh, you've got other tournaments happening as well, but the, this one here is going to be next week, which is next Saturday, uh, down in Correct. Pompano. Uh, once again, before you go, uh, the details. Where is it going to be in Pompano? Sure, it'll be uh, on the south side of Pompano Pier. And you can't miss it. You'll see it right there. If you drive to the pier and you look on the south side, you'll see a bunch of trucks and kayaks getting all lined up and ready. So uh, you won't miss it. And then don't forget, we also have the kickoff party. uh, And that's going to take place at Brews Room in Pompano on Thursday, June 20th. All right, Joe. I greatly appreciate it. Pam, uh, any parting words for Joe? Uh, No, it's just, it's a great thing. Uh, Joy, Joe is an entrepreneur and came up with this idea and uh, he's the only one in the nation that does it to this level and this expertise i know there's other people trying to start smaller ones but congratulations and and thank you joe thanks pam i appreciate it thank you all right my friend thank and you it's f- a family that that's the big yeah thing. well that's one of that's one of my heart strings that is one of my heart strings. That's one of the things I push the most is uh, keeping a family together as best as we can, keeping a family together because there is an attack on the family. Regardless of what you hear, there is an outright attack on the family today. So anything we can do to help keep our families together. For me, fishing was one, one of the most powerful ways that we did it. That's why I enjoyed doing this show. Anyway, we're up against the wall. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. Wish you a wonderful day. All right. Thanks, guys. See you soon, Pam. Bye-bye. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Briscella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. From the author of Silent Steps and Haunted, finding an explanation for the unknown, comes a story so chilling it will haunt you for years to come. Krista is a young woman escaping her past, running away from her family, her traumas, and her God, hoping to find a new life in a different town. But when she is forced to make a horrible choice, she comes to realize malevolent entities have controlled the true darkness she has been a part of. That is when her real terror begins. Penitence is disturbing and evocative. It will tear down the walls between what is real and what is nightmare. Penitence is the new novel by the man called The New Master of Speculative Fiction, Ira Robinson. Find it and all of his books at his website, originalworlds.com. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. 
They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today, 561-793-9992. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, where your pet gets celebrity treatment. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. Dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. All I grab my fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dawn. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing in Florida. When the sun shines all day. It calls me a group of stop fishing in Florida. Oh yeah. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. All right, we are back. It is the Fish Florida Show. I am your host, Riscola. Uh, still kind of waking up. <laughs> uh, it was up till almost 2 o'clock in the morning um, this morning and uh, then woke up at, at 6.15. Um, so I'm, I'm running on fumes at this point. I typically get to uh, to bed a little earlier uh, than that, but had at the last minute I had computer issues and I had the show to do this morning. And I w- I knew I wouldn't sleep well knowing that I had computer issues, so I had to resolve them <laughs> before retiring last night. So before it was all over, actually I got to bed at about two twenty, and then got up this morning at a little after six. So. I'm functioning, <laughs> and no coffee, so there's, what a major difference uh, after the surgery that I had. Big difference. So anyway, this morning, my co-host, Miss Pam Worth, she's uh, one of the top female kayak anglers here in uh, Florida. She brings a unique perspective, because she's literally at the water's level, uh, fishing literally at the water's level, seeing things that uh, we may not easily see from uh, from fishing from a boat or from a bridge or whatever, and uh, so the experiences that she has perspective that she brings in is always very intriguing very interesting thank you miss pam greatly appreciate it oh my pleasure and happy father's day to you sir oh yes and that's a happy father's day to all you dads out there while i'm thinking about it thank you for reminding me uh those of you guys out there that uh work so hard to uh, keep the family together god bless you a happy Father's Day to you. Hope you enjoy your special day today. I, th- I think my kids are going to have something up their sleeves for me today. There's no telling <laughs> before it's all over. Uh, so uh, my next guest is um, Captain Ron Weintraub, and I, and I don't see him. He's not showing up on the board, so I'm not sure what's going on. We'll have to see if we can reach out to Captain Ron and find out what happened. He has um, He had a new product he wanted to kind of discuss with us, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, when we go out, I, now here where I'm at, they they it, do this extensive spraying, which really drives me crazy because I'm not real crazy about that stuff that they spray because you don't never know what they're doing. Um, but they do extensive spraying for mosquitoes because where I'm at, I'm way out west. And uh, I'll tell you what, sometimes it's really bad. You don't even want to walk outside because it's, the moment you step outside, it's like a free-for-all with your body. Uh, they just they'll literally fly away with you sometimes. Um, so they, they do an extensive amount of, of spraying in this area. Well, Captain Ron, uh, those of you who are not familiar, he has a product called Skeeter Beater. Uh, the Skeeter Beater product is something that uh, you can put on you, on your body, that has no toxins in it. It's all natural. It's all 
uh, made with stuff that will not harm you, and it's safe for children. A lot of the stuff that's out there, you got to be very careful with it. It has a lot of it has DEET in it, D E E T. It's extremely powerful pesticide. This uh, is absorbed in your skin, and it's a toxin. It can actually cause all kinds of serious issues for some people. It depends on the sensitivity. It depends on the person's body. So he has a, pr- a product that's called a Skeeter Beater, which is safe for children. He has a version of it that is uh, available for pets, which I just uh, asked him to send me a, some of the product for pets. I want to test it out for my pet. Because, I'm again, you, you put these flea collars and stuff on your pet, you, there are some toxic stuff in there. I'm not real crazy about doing that, especially with my particular pet who is extremely sensitive. My goodness, if he gets a scrap, a small piece of scrap from the table, his, his insides just go crazy. So I have to be very careful with, with what I put on him. Well, Captain Ron has a new idea, a new product that he wanted to uh, introduce to us. Ah, he's on. I got him. Good morning, Captain Ron. Good morning. How you doing? Doing good, sir. Go ahead, Pam. Oh, you, you were talking about, um, or Riscola was just talking about, that you have a brand new product coming out. Um, we're really interested. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about it? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, a lot of people like to, you know, uh, there's a lot of, especially where we live in the Outer Banks of North Carolina, uh, we have a lot of beach weddings and uh, we have a lot of parties and a lot of things, you know, people celebrating for the 4th and everything. Well, the problem is that when some of these wedding parties and everything, um, you know, the bugs are out and they're really bad. And what we're, we're planning on introducing is, and we're going to franchise this to, to, to the other states and other people that want to do this, we're going to take Skeeter Beater and put it in a gas-powered fogging machine. And what we can do is we can go out and fog the area, just like those spray trucks do that you've seen since we were little kids. Mm-hmm. And we're going to fog people's yards and decks so when they're having their parties or their weddings, they we will be able to go out there and provide that service for them so everything will be bug-free. We've done it in the past, but we haven't done it on a full-time thing. But uh, this is something that um, if you're retired and you're just looking to want to make a little extra income in your state, you can contact me and I can uh, get you set up with a franchise and get you some product from Peter Beater. Um, and get you a, a fogging machine. Uh, all they have to do is contact me at uh, C-A-P-T underscore Ron at AOL.com and just put in the subject matter uh, Skeeter Beater Fogger and that way I'll know it's not spam. Or they can reach me by phone. It's 252 475 it's a, it, the product smells so great. Everybody's very happy about it. Um, like Rosella said, he just ordered it. We, we just sent him out some pet product for his product. I, now, I, you I'm know, not going to mention any names, but when I, when our chihuahua was very small, my wife put on a flea and tick treatment, and it took the hair off the top of mm. her head, all down her back, everywhere she applied it. The hair, and she's now 17 years old, and the hair has never grown back. Mm. So, Raskel, I know what you're talking about, about those chemicals. Those chemicals took the hair off of her, and it's never grown back. There's some really serious toxic stuff in that. And so the one thing that you didn't point out that that I is very important to me uh, is that right your product is safe for children. That that in and of itself... you know, stands above just about everything else that's on the market. Because if you look at stuff out on the market, one of the first warnings is, you know, you have to keep out of reach of children. Uh, you have to be careful what age you put it on. Um, so exactly. the toxicity, and, and you, you mentioned that the uh, the city fogs. Well, what the city is fogging, I have no idea. And I'm sure that it's not something that is natural and, and uh, non-damaging. Uh, not harmful, no. unharmful, like uh, the Skeeter Beater product is. So when we're talking right. about now, this, what you're okay. offering, we're offering something that um, is going to be available that is, what's the least, the easy, 
it says none. It's just not harmful for you. Uh, it, it, no, we, it's not. It's not harmful at all. And we also have a sunscreen with 40 SPF. So we have the only product right now that I know of that has the two ingredients that's actually destroying the coral reef. So I do know that uh, there's a lot there's a lot of reefs in Florida and there's a lot in Hawaii and other countries. This sun beater that we have, exclusive, is the only sunscreen I know right now that can be getting to be applied and go in the water around the reef and it will not harm the reef at all because it's, there's two ingredients in other sunscreens that's actually harming the reefs. So if there's anybody listening to this program that goes to the beach or dives or goes there, um, you know, please contact us about our sun beater because it will not harm the coral reef. And we also make a, a thing for all you scuba divers. Uh, we also make a bite burn beater, which is a, like a jellyfish. It uh, eases the pain of sea lice. And it's just all around first aid in a bottle, and it works to perfection. Sweet. We've tested this out everywhere. Well, I like the idea that I, that it's uh, non-harmful. I mean, that's one of the most important things to me. Uh, we our right. environment is is inundated with all kinds of toxins. From uh, I mean, it's just, if you if you read if you read some of the ingredients of things that we use, I mean, there's like chemicals in there that I can't even pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> More or less not knowing what, what what they do to your body. Huh? Yeah. But 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 I do know for a fact now this is this is something that I can that I can actually show people a picture of. That that chemical truck that sprays for mosquitoes and other things that comes around and sprays people down uh sprays down your street or whatever. It actually took the paint off of my wife's Saturn SUV. Wow. Now, if it will take the paint off, I don't know what my it is to do to skin. What is that happening to your <laughs> lungs? You're breathing that stuff in. Exactly. Wow. And that, and some of these companies that are spraying, these guards are spraying chemicals. And so I called one of them, and I asked him, I said, why do you recommend that people – stay indoors with their pets for an hour and 45 minutes after you spray their yard. And they said, well, it's just time for it to dry. That's not the reason why. The reason why is because they're spraying dangerous chemicals in your yard, and they want it to dry before you yeah. or your animals touch it. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah. with Skeeter Beater, you don't have any problem. In fact, uh, people have stayed outdoors when I have actually fogged the yard. And they said it was fine. They said, Hey, no bugs, no yellow flies, no nothing. And uh, the chicks and tick, uh, ticks and everything. Uh, but this, but this new uh, thing that we're going to start doing on a regular basis, this this fogging for yards. Like I said, if you're retired or you're just looking to, uh, you know, just to have a uh, little extra income coming in, just contact me. I will be glad to get you started uh, fogging in your own uh, county or state or whatever, feel free to call me. Hey, uh, well, Captain, county and state, have you contacted um, the county officials? That, I mean, they come through here and spray every time that they start to see the mosquitoes are too big. I mean, is there any way to sell directly to them? Uh, I have tried to before, and uh, I, they, have a, they have a contract with this chemical company, mm. and uh, – you know, they're under contract. They're just spraying this poison. But hmm. uh, now the individual can uh, – now, I don't know how it is in Florida, but I know here in North Carolina, you can actually contact the county representative and ask them not to spray your yard with that with, with, with their truck. So if you don't want your, if you don't want your yard uh, inundated with chemicals or poison or whatever – you can actually request it in our county. Now, I don't know how it is in Palm Beach County. You may be able to say, look, I don't want that uh, truck coming down my street and spraying those chemicals. But in, the, in our county here in North Carolina, you can request them not to come down your street. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to find out because I they do come by. And typically they do it at midnight when everybody's inside. 
Um, but I can hey, hear that, I can but, hear that truck. It has a unique sound, and I can hear it when it comes by. Right, the same way here. We have thirty spray trucks here, and there's a lot of people that said, "Don't come down my street. I don't want you spraying that stuff around my, especially around my house." Or I my have house. no idea when in the world it is that they're spraying, and and it's it's I I find it interesting that they do it at midnight. They know nobody's out at that point. Uh, well, well the, they, the majority they of people around, are you know not out at that point. So around seven o'clock in the afternoon, they do it here. Oh my goodness! Yeah, well, that's when everybody's out. The kids are out in the pool. You know, people are at the beach. Because I only live like four point three miles from the ocean front here in the Outer Bank. So you get you get everything. You get the no CMs. You get the uh, we got we, the yellow flies. You get the uh, the horse flies. Uh, what the mosquitoes? <laughs> you get the whole bouquet yeah, got, of the of the thing. I mean, we got, you know, see, the Outer Banks is kind of unique because we have, you know, we have the ocean, and then we have the sound, and then we have the swamp lands. So we basically have just a mishmash of everything. And then, like I said, we have mosquitoes, yellowheads, uh, horse flies. We got, we got everything. <laughs> and uh, so you're a good testing be, ground. You have a good testing it, ground. It, it, we're a great testing ground. In fact, <laughs> what we did with Skeeter, with Skeeter Beetle, we actually sent some to the surveyors up in Raleigh, North Carolina. And, they, you know, surveyors go into some bad places, ticks and chiggers and yeah, red bugs yeah. and everything else. And they said they sprayed it. They said they came home. They didn't have one on them. So, you know, we we put it to the test. I mean, we wanted to find out before we went to, to, to go out and, and really, you know, market this the way we have I mean, we really tested it hard. I mean, we we put it to the ultimate test. And if it'll work here, it'll work anyway. Wow. And um, one of the one of the late, uh, one of the missionaries that went to Haiti to help those people after the mudslide, she she sent us a picture of her holding a bottle of skeeter beater in her hand. She said, "This is the only thing that works in Haiti." Wow. Now, um. The uh, the government has contacted us about uh, getting some uh, major quantities because you know out west they've had all that flooding and everything. And oh, that's, that's going to present happen. yeah, that's going to present they, major. They've activated the national guard. And of course, those guys are trying to help people clean up, and they're getting eaten up by mosquitoes and no seals and yellow flies and everything else. So, as yep. far as yep. I can tell you, with all you know, with a no deep product. It smells great and it works. I just, it just speaks for itself. Well, I like the idea that it's uh, it's not harmful and it's safe for kids. That that in and alone of itself is uh, means a lot to me. Exactly. Anyway, I'm all out of, I'm out of time, my friend. I've I've got to get on to a break and I've got another slot coming up. I want to thank you for taking the time to call in. If uh, anybody wants more information, you can reach Captain Ron at Captain. C A P T underscore Ron at AOL dot com. You can also call him. He'll take a phone call. The number is 250 475 0244. You can find him online, Skeeter Beater. Thank you, Captain Ron. Wish you a wonderful day, my friend. Thank you, my friend. And uh, your stuff is on the way. God bless. God bless. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Briscella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. From the author of Silent Steps and Haunted, finding an explanation for the unknown, comes a story so chilling it will haunt you for years to come. Krista is a young woman escaping her past, running away from her family, her traumas, and her God, hoping to find a new life in a different town. But when she is forced to make a horrible choice, she comes to realize malevolent entities have controlled the true darkness she has been a part of. That is when her real terror begins. Penitence is disturbing and evocative. It will tear down the walls between what is real and what is nightmare. Penitence is the new novel by the man called the new master of speculative fiction, Ira Robinson. Find it and all of his books at his website, originalworlds.com. Do you own a laser printer? 
copier or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561 792 9600. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today, 561-793-9992. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, where your pet gets celebrity treatment. Can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> Uh, what is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. Dad joke. Corny, grown worthy, but also one of the simplest ways to share a moment with your kids. What did the buffalo say when he dropped his son off for school? Bye, son. <laughs> so take a moment to make your kid laugh because dad jokes rule. Make your kid laugh today. Go to fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. Okay, we are back. It is the Fish Florida Show. Good morning to you if you just join us. Anything that you've missed on the show is always something you can be found on the archives. The archives are located at fishfloridashow.com. If you look at uh, past events, I believe is the, the link. You'll find uh, all the shows up to date up to last week, I believe it is. Um, so anything that you've missed can always be picked up later on. This morning I have Pam Worth. She's one of my most favorite people in the world because she takes the time to call in. And she's a, a top female kayak angler here in Florida, sharing her experiences and her opinions and some of her skill sets with us. Good morning, Miss Pam. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for having me on. I always enjoy myself. It is an honor and a privilege to have you on. I was picking up a little bit of noise from your phone. That's why I had muted you for uh, previously. There was some banging or clanging going on. Your phone was picking it up. So I, I, kind oh, I think of... I was scrambling eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so she's cooking as she's co-hosting. How do you like that? Multitasking. That's wonderful. That's great. Well, my next guest, uh, I believe he goes by the name of Captain... Um, 
Red Ed. Uh, if I have it right, I hope I have it right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Riscala? I'm doing well, my friend. Go ahead, Pam. Oh, good morning. I just, uh, happy Father's Day to you. And uh, what are you up to this morning? Oh, uh, just sitting here drinking some Guatemala coffee at this point. And, and oh, tell, tell, here. tell me a little bit, where are you at? Captain, and is it Captain Red Ed, or is it Captain Red, or is it Captain Ed? It's ca- Captain Red Ed. Okay. Uh, I'm located in Old Homosassa, Florida. Ooh. Uh, Florida's last best kept secret. It is a beautiful place. It's been a while since I've been there. Some of the clearest. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Homosassa uh, Springs is, at one time, I may be wrong now, but at one time was 99.9% pure water. I've never heard that number, but it is pristine clean up here, that's for sure. Uh, and one thing most people don't know about this area, and we're located about an hour and a half north of Tampa and maybe about two hours west of Orlando. Uh, one of my favorite uh, places to fish. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'd love to get you up here on your kayak and put you on some big monsters. Um, but we, uh, For every mile you go offshore here, it drops a foot. So if you want to be in 40 foot of water, you have to run 40 miles offshore. Good gravy. And the nice thing about that, again, the water being as pristine as it is, you're dropping your bait down the bottom, and you're actually seeing the bait hit in 30, 40 foot of water. That's amazing. That uh, is. Yeah, it, it, wow. There's not many places left like this in Florida. I guess the Everglades is similar, but we have it's a 31,000 acre national wildlife refuge, so... It's like Florida was hundreds of years ago, like the Seminole Indians saw it. Wow. It is, it is beautiful. They, Homosassa and Ozella, by far, are two of my favorite places to fish, without a doubt. Which, which, yep. Yep. Where was it that the, uh, the old Tarzan stuff was filmed? Where was that? Uh, it was here in Homosassa. That's, that's where the water was. The, some of the purest water in Florida comes out of there. I, I may be wrong about the percentage, but it was something like 99% pure water coming out of the springs yeah, they there. actually we have uh here in the river monkey island there's some of the monkeys left over from the old tarzan films i wow. was gonna say that's where tarzan used to film yep, yep. i i had been it's been many many years i had been there and uh we were in a uh glass bottom canoe and it was almost like there was no water it was so clear we the little baby turtles, you can see the little baby turtles, and we're probably in 12 feet of water. Um, you can see little baby turtles down at the bottom, uh, swimming around down there. It was so clear. Uh, it was amazing. It really was. Well, you know, it's it's even more exciting when you see a big gag yeah, grouper swimming down mm. there. The oh, you got me. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were just out a few days ago, and we ran probably 50, 60 miles offshore, and the water was immaculate, clean, blue, and uh, we just slammed the grouper, uh, cobia, and uh, this was a first for me. And I started fishing here in 1981. I actually caught a barracuda the other day. Wow! It was about a four foot cuda that put on an aerial show for us. It was, it was a pretty amazing day. Are there a lot of cudas? You know, now that you mentioned barracuda on the West Coast, because I spent some time on the West Coast, I don't recall ever seeing any bear. Not, not that I can remember. No, no, the, yeah, I've been fishing here since '81. That's the first one I've ever seen. The first one I ever hooked. But yeah. again, we were in 50, 60 foot of water. The water temp is already 84 degrees out there. Wow. I, I think that's why the cuda was here. And uh, actually, on opening day of gag season, June 1st. We even caught a mahi up here, um, and that's that's rare. And I know of four that were caught that day on opening day. Wow! Yeah, my friend Tuesday caught the mahi. That's amazing. Now, didn't you guys just have a big cobia tournament up there? Oh yeah, that was last weekend. It's always the second weekend of June, and they limit that to two hundred boats, and it's usually full. There's usually a waiting list, and you want to see a spectacle. 200 boats running out to Homosassa at the, at the same time. It's, it's quite the scene to behold. My goodness. Wow. Yeah, yeah <laughs> though, though it, 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 
was kind of, and I don't know if you guys remember how bad the weather was last week, but we're, we're on the other coast from you, too. In my opinion, they actually should have rescheduled it. it uh, I was entered in the tournament, and uh, I'm a little crazy, but I'm not stupid. I did <laughs> not go out because of the lightning and wind. And uh, I spoke with many of my captain friends up here, and every one of them told me how they got beat to hell. And uh, most of them did not go out on the second day. Uh, uh, one of my neighbors, another friend, uh, on the second day, they were in about 20, 20 miles out, 20 foot of water, and uh, they got hit with a water spout. I spun the boat wow. 40 degrees. Mm. One of the guys in the boat fell over on the throttles. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it it was a really, really dangerous situation, and uh, even the Citrus County Sheriff's on Saturday mor morning advised the tournament committee to reschedule the tournament, but they didn't. They went on with it. Wow. So uh, what what kind of species do you like to target? Uh, um, well, it depends on the time of the year because it is a real diverse fishery. Uh, I mean, we've had days where we've caught 10 species in a day, Right now, you know, snapper just opened on Tuesday, red snapper, so we're kind of focusing there, snapper and grouper. Uh, like I said, we did just get a cobia. There's still some cobia around. And, uh, and then, you know, it's a, it's a really exciting time of the year for us here because, you know, next July 1st, we have scallop season open. Wow. Well, I, I know when I spent uh, some time in, on the West Coast, I was up in the Panhandle. Um, they would have uh, oystering season. And you go out and buy, those of you who like oysters, I never cared for oysters until I was up in the panhandle. Um, they, I didn't want to have anything to do with those things. They just didn't look good. <laughs> but uh, they got me hooked on them. I, I and, call the scallops dollops of goodness. Oh, uh, well, it's a great, amazing. great activity for all ages. Uh, yeah, geez, I've had some families that have been coming with me for 15 years now watching the kids grow up. So, uh, you know, it's usually waist or chest deep water. You're snorkeling down, grabbing mm, them. And, uh, that's awesome. Uh, the limit is two gallons per, in the shell, two gallons per person per day, up to 10 gallons per boat. So, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, we just took the last bag of scallops out of the freezer last night for, from last season. I figured with uh, only 15 days to go before the season opened, it was safe to uh, eat the last yeah. bag of scallops last night. Yeah. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead and take up the reserves. Uh, yeah. In 15 days, I'll be eating fresh ones. So, yeah. uh, but we, uh, and you know, I was going to say, the one thing about scallops, you know how clean the water is up there? Scallops, unlike oysters, cannot leave, live in dirty water. They really need a clean uh, flat to live on. Hmm. Exactly. That's Interesting. why this area, Homosassa, Citrus County, is the scallop cal capital of Florida, because all these rivers here are spring-fed. As you were saying, you know, it starts as spring water, then yep. turns to brack, yep. and then salt when you get to the Gulf. Wow. So I, I think that, I'm not sure, but are you a guide? Yes, sir. And you have... Um, uh, you offer services, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. So, what what is the name have, of the? Uh, we have different websites. Our fishing website is homosassaredfish dot com, and our scallop site is homosassascallopassociation dot com. And there's some great, great videos on both sites. Uh, the last couple of years, we had Dar Sizzle came up, and uh, she shot some videos. The one we shot with her last year. Uh, I think the other day I looked, it had something like 439,000 views. My goodness. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, we had some great drone footage. Uh, if you want to see that video, it's it's on my website, or you can go to YouTube, How to Catch and Cook Scallops with Dar Sizzle. It's, it's a very, very cool video, and gives you an awesome idea of what this area is like. So we can find you on the web, and, and Homo Sassa, I believe, is spelled H-O-M, like Mary, H-O-M-O-S-A-S-S-A. -S 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 -A. That is that correct? H-O-M-O-S-A-S-S-A. -S 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 yeah. And, and the Homo website, Sassa. give out the website again. Sure, it's homosassaredfish.com or homosassascallopassociation.com. 
And we actually have a fleet of boats for scalloping last year, opening day, which again is July 1st here in Citrus County. We had 10 boats out there last year, so we can handle any size group. We do two scallop trips a day. The morning is 7 to 11, and the afternoon is 12 to 4. Sounds like a lot of fun. And rewarding, too. Yeah. So you get yeah, the... it's the best description I can give you. It's like an underwater Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> and that nails it. Everybody that yeah. I tell that to, as yeah. soon as they get in the water for the first time, you can't describe it any better than that. Well, <laughs> that's great. And, and... It's, it's a lot of fun. It, it's really a safe. I've never heard of anybody getting hurt scalloping. It, it, and it, your captains look out for everybody. They watch over the water. Um, it, it's a great time. Yeah, well, like I said last year when we had 10 boats out, we always make sure we have one or two captains that stay in the boat and, and kind of act as a lifeguard. Uh, you know, it it does get crazy. I mean, you can almost walk from boat to boat to boat out there. There's so many boats out there. So, uh, you know, My it, goodness. this tiny little fishing village is about to explode, you know, between grouper and snapper and scallop season. It's uh, one of our busiest and most exciting times of the year. Well, we're going to, I want you to come back on and give us an update as to what's happening later on, uh, probably another month or so. If you're available, we'll have you come back on, give us an update, sure. let us know what's going on. And uh, Yeah, come on up. Uh, you know, I've, I've already, and uh, I don't think there's one captain or guide up here that would even argue or dispute this, but uh, I've become the undisputed scallop king up here. I, uh, Swim more than Michael Phelps and Katie Ledecky combined in the summertime. <laughs> that's, that's I heard that swimming that's is one great. of the best exercises. It, it, there's no damage done to your body, unlike jogging or, or uh, things of that nature. It's actually, since it's uh, resistance, I can't remember the right word, but some, some resistance on your body. It's actually healthy to swim, more healthy to swim than it is just about any other exercise because of the way that it it uh handles you. 10 and 15 pounds every summer <laughs> good for you <laughs> i put my winter coat of fat on and then i lose it in the summer my goodness <laughs> all right well brilliant. i'm up against a break pam before we go any parting words for captain red ed no, I just think people should check it out. Uh, if you're looking for something this summer to do with your family, scalping is a great activity. It is so much fun. And that water is beautiful. And with the captains watching everybody, it is a very safe, even for the novice snorkeler, a very, very safe enterprise. Yeah, you're, tr- you're exactly right. Uh, and, and, again, all of our captains, all of our guides, a real experience. We'll get in the water and help you, show you. And, and I'd say 99% of the time we get our limits. So uh, wow. not only is it great, but uh, great fun. You get rewarded. Yeah. Super after the fact. Hot dog. Yeah, and for the people that are, are nervous about how much he's taking, scallops only live a year. So scallop season opens after they've already bred, and the scallops sooner or later are going to pass on anyway. So I don't want people to think that they're, you know, raping all the scallops out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a natural progression, and and it's great. Every scallop lays between two to four million eggs. My goodness. Wow. Uh, And the FWC has done all kinds of studies, and and the population is not in any danger at all. Mm -hmm. The FWC does a great job monitoring this, this scallop population. Well, all right, Captain uh, Redhead, I appreciate it, sir. I'm looking forward to having you back on with an update later on. Okay, and uh, again, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And uh, I'd I'd also just like to say one last thing. If you haven't registered for the CCA Star Tournament, that started Memorial Day, runs through Labor Day. Another great family thing, uh, scholarships, awards all kinds of things and uh you know it's uh, another great family activity i had uh and you're, i had your, liza your area has more redfish than anybody else or most other counties so that's yep. a great place to go stop them yep yep, yep. citrus county uh, was one of the counties with the most tagged redfish we had uh liza fitzgerald scheduled to be on this morning and she didn't call in so she may have been in an area where 
uh, the uh, show. I, I know where Liza was fishing yesterday, and it was Ozello. Oh, no, she was actually in Yankee Town yesterday. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'll hear from her eventually, and we'll figure it out, and we'll have her back on. She can give us an update. I, I love things like the CCA of Florida. I, I, and um, uh, what's his name? Captain Holland, I think it is. I can't, I can't think of his name right off the bat. There's another gentleman who... Uh, they go out and clean the water for us, you know. Uh, they go out and pick up uh, ba- old crab traps and stuff like that. And then they, they don't just pick them up and throw them away. They pick them up and repurpose them. How, how much, you know, how more true can you be to recycling than you take trash, you take it, now you make, out of that trash, you make something usable that people can use. Everybody wins. I love it. Anyway, I, I'm up out of town, my friend, out of time, my friend. I've got to run. Thank you so much. God bless you. Wish you a wonderful day and a happy Father's Day to you too as well. Great, great. Happy Father's Day, and thanks for the time. So long. You're listening to the Fish Florida Show with your host, Briscella. Don't go away. We'll be right back. What's up, Ricky Dillon here at the largest social media gathering in the world. So the internet is an amazing place, but sometimes it can be a not so great place with online bullying and trolling and stuff. Have you ever seen online bullying before? Unfortunately, it's kind of common. Online, people can hide behind the internet. Those comment sections can be a little... Harsh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Word for it. I've been called many homophobic names. I felt embarrassed. I felt yeah. humiliated. It made me stop liking myself. What if I told you there is something that you can use anytime that you see bullying online that calls attention to it in a nice way. Like, hey, that's not nice. I wish that was the thing. It's this! So anytime that you see any kind of hate online, go into your phone, go into the symbol section, post this I, and it says that that's bullying, that's not nice. So would you post this if you saw someone bullying someone? Oh yeah, definitely. It's like a lot more mature way to handle the situation. Find the emoji in your phone, send it to five of your friends, and let them know what it means to be a witness. Go to eyewitnessbullying.org to learn more about the emoji. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Wittick of Bowen Realty. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick of Bowen Realty. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Diane Wittick at Bowen Realty, located in Wellington at Wellington Trace East and Forest Hill Boulevard. 561-247-5478. It's the Fish Florida Show with your host, Riscola Stevens, bringing the outdoors to you every Sunday morning, 8 to 10 a.m. And now your host, Riscola Stevens. All right, my friends, it is the final portion of the show. And it is uh, honestly, this I've been looking forward to this uh, all morning because uh, my next guest uh, is someone who has been a regular for me out of the Keys. Uh, you may know her as the Florida Salty Cowgirl. Uh, well, she got, I call it a gig. She got the job of a lifetime. And I'm uh, just so <laughs> en- envious of her. I, I want to just, oh, she got a, a gig up in Alaska, of all places. And she has shared some of the videos online, just awesome stuff going on. And I, <laughs> I texted her and asked her if she could call in. And here we are. Voila. Good morning, Miss Angelia. Good morning, everyone. Rascala, Pam, Um yeah, it couldn't have been better timing, Riscala. I had been out on the water for uh, about a week straight, which we do a lot, and very little cell reception and no Wi-Fi. <laughs> and uh, I was heading into port for the next week, so you couldn't have timed it better. I'm so happy to be here. 
And by the way, it's 5.45 in the morning, so if I sound tired... It's oh, better. my goodness. I, <laughs> I, and I've been four weeks now in Alaska going hard, 12, 14-hour days with no days down, so wow. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> God bless you. Wow. I'm glad that you're yeah, able to do a, it. Oh, no problem. What a shock to the... What a, I was going to say, what a, what a shock to my system up here, guys. It is like complete and total opposite culture shock. I feel like somebody dropped me on a different planet, <laughs> but it's beautiful, and it's amazing. Everything's big up here, you guys. Big mountains, big water, big fish, big boats. Seriously and, big uh, fish. Yeah. What, what do you call yeah. the fish? Tell us a little bit about your day. Oh, my goodness. I'm on an 80-foot yacht. And when we, we're doing lots of little excursions. I work for a private couple, and uh, we have their family and their guests, and we go on lots of me excursions fishing. We tow a 31-foot metal fishing boat, custom boat, and uh, I'm in some very comfortable conditions, but I really work my butt off. Working on a boat and living on the boat is mm. definitely a different scenario because you really don't have any time away. So I always joke, when you get on the ground and you can get off the boat, get off the boat. <laughs> 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 so, But this is a pretty big boat. Uh, I can't I have to say it's pretty darn comfortable. The weather up here is completely different. Um my God, you guys, I waited. Uh, I'm a marine mammal fanatic, if you've ever watched my manatee stuff. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to see the whales. Uh, my first shot was at some doll porpoises that were just amazing. And then we got about 20 orcas that came uh, around the boat. I was so excited. I couldn't even get any good footage. My hands were shaking. I was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I have whale video with them breaching the water, just lots of them over and over, close to the boat, far away. Wow. And I'm screaming like bloody murder in the background. It's really <laughs> funny. <laughs> it's just amazing. You would never believe these animals could really do this right in front of your face. I feel like somebody dropped me in a National Geographic episode. Wow. So, yeah, when I put a line in the water, and the first fish I snag up is like, you know, a 60, 70 pound halibut. <laughs> wow. I was like, thank you, Alaska. I'm here. <laughs> she, she sent me some pictures yep. of some of the fish that she's caught. And I, I am so envious yeah. that the halibut, yeah. <laughs> the last couple that you sent me were even bigger than the ones that you posted online. They are. They That's are. amazing. I've, uh, I've, had, I've had several good days of halibut fishing. And I've got a big grin, and my cheeks are hurt really smiling because I limit out every time on big ends. So we've even gone after what they call chicken halibut, which are supposed to be, you know, 20 pounders smaller. Mm -hmm. And boom, I just lay into these monsters right now. So, wow. yeah, it's been pretty exciting. And I caught a bunch of what's called rockfish, and there's so many different kind of rockfish. I kind of equate them to our grouper, even though they're totally different. And I caught uh, a bunch of quilled rockfish. Really good eating mm. and uh, and fun to catch. Yeah, it's basically bottom fishing, and um, yeah, it's it's really simple technique. But uh, the fish are fun, and those halibut. Oh my goodness, you guys! I bet they that's a heck of a, a barn fight. Barn door halibut for a reason because they just hit you like a barn door, and that's wow. what it's like bringing in. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. It's so, a wrestling match. How cold is the air temperature? It's, it's in the low 50s, and I've been really lucky, and I've had a lot of sunny days, but um, right now we're sunk into what I call just a whiteout. You can't even see the big, beautiful snow-capped mountains that, by the way, are everywhere mm. all the time. Mm. <laughs> I'm a Florida girl. I'm really in shock. My eyes are just like on the overload. I'm on sensory overload all the time. But yeah, it's, uh, we're sitting in a fog right now and you get that a lot. And it feels like it's raining, but you look at the water and there's no droplets on it. It's really interesting. You're like wow. in a cloud. Wow. It's the heaviest fog you can imagine. And yes, I'm in the middle of the most big, beautiful, white-capped mountains everywhere. And it'll just set in white fog to where you have to go with your radar on on the boat and you have to turn your radar on. You have to turn, I mean, I'm sorry, they say that twice. Anyway, um, you turn your foghorn on, mm -hmm. you know, on an automatic setting where it's going off every couple of minutes like your Coast Guard requires. And, and uh, you really have to pay attention because you get whited out on the water up here quick. That and must be spooky. Oh, it's weird. It's really odd. It's not. Wow. It's like polar opposite of Florida weather, literally. But, um, yeah, uh, the, the, 
the water is just completely different up here. It's ferries and cruise ships and barges and very industrial, and it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, and, and really, it's just amazing. About how deep are you when, you, when you're doing this fishing? Um, we're fishing in relatively uh, more shallow water, you mm-hmm. know, anywhere from, let's say, 60 to, to 200 foot. So mm-hmm. Between the current and the depth, it gets too hard to get a weight down fast enough. You know, mm-hmm. um, so uh, traditional bottom fishing, you want to get that weight down there as fast as possible. But when you're traveling, we're traveling in thousands of feet of water, which is really weird. It's cliffs and edges everywhere. But yeah, we go up into these little coves and these little straits where several bodies of water will come together. So it really collects your bait. And it makes sense. It's the same kind of thing back home. But it feels mm-hmm. there's just tons and tons of those spots everywhere. They don't use GPS numbers because we have nothing to go by except GPS numbers. They have landmarks everywhere. Everything's called something. They don't give wow. out numbers. They give out spots, you know? Yeah, because you've got landmarks everywhere. And yeah, um, it's really what, what do you think the uh, the water temperature is? It is, it's 52 degrees, and Ooh. I know for a fact. <laughs> um, all I learned was don't get near the water, don't get in the water. I'm a Florida girl, you guys. Ugh. I'm missing the sandbar right now, even though I'm having a fantastic time. But, yes, there's that, yeah. my heart is missing the sandbar. Mm. But, uh, but anyway, uh, the water's 52 degrees. We had a little oopsie where the towing harness for the fishing boat got stuck on the prop. And one of these crazy Alaskans put a mask on and got in that water for eight minutes. I videotaped it. He was Holy not comfortable. Smokes. He got out and went on the hot tub on this cushy yacht. But wow. <laughs> we fed him whiskey, you know. But, um, but yeah, uh, they're crazy. It's 52 degrees. I wear PFD at all times when I'm fishing because those fish are big, and I don't like cold water, and I really yeah, don't want I don't like cold. And I don't have a lot of meat <laughs> on my bones. <laughs> I don't like cold. So, you guys know where I park at everywhere? When I walk in a, a restaurant or something, when I do get on land, they go, what are you wearing and where the hell are you from? <laughs> <laughs> there are shorts and t-shirts. There's kids swimming in the lakes up here. It's oh, stupid. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> These people are crazy. Yeah, uh, and they think we're just as crazy as we think they are. So that's wow. a good thing. Well, yeah. I am so, so happy for you. Blast. I am. I'll keep feeding you guys video and pictures yeah. of everyone. and. Yeah, I'm going to soak up the Alaska experience, and then I'll be back at the sandbar, and I'll be fishing Hot the dog. <laughs> I, I, But, yeah, I'll keep feeding you the Alaska experience. It's amazing, you guys. I, I envy you I'm because— it, hundreds of miles on the water, so I'm seeing it gosh, from the vantage point. Yeah. I, I, I envy you because it's uh, truly once in a, in a lifetime experience um, what you're, what you're uh, going through. And I'm very happy for you that you're able to do it, you know? You're able well, to to you make I'm it not all happen. Excited about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's great. I really uh, I'm great. I'm glad to have everybody interested because it's really interesting. It really is. So yeah, if you if people want to people want to follow you, they can follow you on Facebook, right? They can absolutely follow me on Facebook, and I'm totally excited because my revamped website, FloridaSaltyCowgirl.com, will be back up and going tomorrow, and I'll be pumping it full of blogs, and I've been keeping a journal, and the crazy little coves and passageways and straits that we've been traveling. It's been really interesting. And some of the, <laughs> so, yeah, some of the videos. A lot. Yeah, some of the videos yes, you put up as a well. A lot of video, a lot of, a lot of my... Uh, tracking our travels and crazy stuff that's gone on. It's it's been a, it's been an adventure, and I'm about you know a quarter of the way through the summer. So yeah, wow. it's great. I'm so happy I'll for keep you. you posted. Yes, and I'm looking forward to having you back on here. You know, next opportunity we can get you on and giving us an update. I wish you a wonderful day, awesome. my dear. Hey, thank you guys. Happy Father's Day to everybody, including my dad. I love you, Dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> par- <laughs> thank par- you. All righty, parting words, Miss right. Pam. I was going to say, stay warm, my friend, and uh, oh, honey, I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll see you soon, Pam. We'll go fishing at the end of the summer, okay? Sounds yeah. like a plan. Yeah, she, Take care, lady. She, she'll, awesome. she'll have time to Bye, thaw guys. out by then. Bye-bye. <clears throat> thank, right? thank you, Bye, Angelia. Yeah. Always a pleasure to have her on. Um, very, very, very fortunate lady. Very And, and a dream, living a dream. I, I would love to be... I can't stand the cold, but I could do it for a little while. When I was uh, uh, in the in the military, they sent me to Denver, Colorado, where um, it was snowing at the end of May. It was snow flurrying at the end of May. 
so I was happy to get out of there. But I, I handled it for a while. In fact, there were almost six months when I was there. Anyway, it's uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're. People say you make your own luck. She's worked really hard. She has a commercial, not just a captain's license, but like a commercial captain's license. Yeah. Um, so you know, people, you make your own luck. When people sit back, oh, they're so lucky. No. She, she, she worked for it. Yeah, she took yeah. advantage of a situation but was prepared yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. She wouldn't have been able to do it if she hadn't have done her homework. That's really what it boils down to. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're all out of time. Parting words, Miss Pam, before we go. Just, you know, I, I wish all the dads out there the best day ever. Um, I want to thank my dad in heaven for everything he's done, started me fishing. And, you know, blessings to all of you. Well, thank you, my dear, and a blessing back to you, and thank you for taking the time and being so gracious with your time uh, on Sunday mornings and sharing with me. Uh, folks, we'll be back in a week. We appreciate you listening, and uh, to you dads that are out there, God bless you and wish you a wonderful day.